Hey everyone, Dr. Brace here. It's Fish Plastics Friday and it's April, so that means it's Rosacea Awareness Month. Rosacea is a funny disease. We don't really know what causes it. There's lots of different theories. Some people think it's from a bacterial overgrowth on the skin. Some people think it's from a dust mite based on studies. The problem is you can find the same bacteria and the same mites on skin for people that don't have rosacea. Is it an autoimmune disease? Is it an environmental uh, trigger? Is it a dietary trigger? We don't really know. And when you have a disease where you don't really know what the cause is, or potentially there's multiple causes, you have two choices. You can try to treat the cause, antibiotics, antimicrobials, things like that, diet, or you can treat the outcome. And this is kind of like diabetes. Diabetes is a chronic disease. If you could have a pancreatic transplant, you could treat the cause and make insulin with a new pancreas. But if you can't, then you can treat the, the um, the outcome, which is low insulin by giving exogenous insulin, which is how we do it. So with rosacea, I always tell patients that there's no cure, but there are management strategies. And my favorite management strategy is the pulse dilator. So it's on and it's warming up. We treat a lot of people with rosacea. Had a few patients this week already. My favorite uh, treatment for type one and type two rosacea is the pulse dilator. So this guy here, you can see it has some settings for rosacea. We have different handy sizes where we can target vessels at different depths in the skin. So what does that do? The pulse dye laser is a laser that targets hemoglobin. It's a 595 nanometer laser, which means that it's selectively absorbed. Its energy is absorbed by hemoglobin and hemoglobin is the pigment in blood in the heme. And when that laser energy enters your uh, blood cell, your red blood cell, it heats it up and basically causes a thermal injury to the blood vessel, causing it to contract and shrink down. And the end result is less redness. And so for type one and type two, so telangiectatic spider vessels would be type one, type two would be pustules. We use pulse dye laser. And there's two different ways to use pulse dye laser. You can use it very gently where you do something called pulse stacking, where lower energies, more treatments, no downtime, kind of will clear up the redness. Or purpura, where we bruise your whole face and that clears up the redness. I'm gonna show an example here. We've shown this in the past on our Instagram, but this is a patient of mine that had very bad type two rosacea and using only the pulse dye laser, we were able to clear it up. We did a purpura treatment and then we managed it with pulse stacking. So that's a great option if that sounds like you. The thing to remember though, like diabetes is there's no cure. And so this is something that's a management strategy. You have to do multiple treatments. I usually tell people three or four treatments a year spaced about a month apart is the optimal timing but I can't guarantee that you won't need six or eight or every month to get the control that you want of your particular rosacea. The other type of rosacea that I treat is type three rosacea, which is rhinophyma. So you've probably seen people with the big, big nose, the big knobbly kind of texture to their nose. It looks really heavy, it's weighed down. It's incorrectly assumed to be related to alcohol use or abuse. It's actually a form of rosacea, rosacea acne. The oil glands in the nose get really big, get hypertrophied, and uh, they just continue to grow and they create this distortion of the nose. And so the way to deal with that is to actually re-sculpt the nose, to cut away all that diseased tissue. It's oil glands, sebaceous hyperplasia is what we call it. Sebaceous just means oil, hyperplasia means big. And so we will use, in this practice, in my practice, the CO2 laser. And the CO2 laser is a cutting and coagulating laser that has minimal thermal damage to the surrounding tissue. And so I can use it to carve and sculpt somebody's nose back to a normal shape, minimizing collateral damage, whilst at the same time causing coagulation or hemostasis or basically not having it bleed everywhere. You can use other methods. You can use cautery, you can use um, surgical steel, you could cut it, but it would be really, really bloody. It would be really difficult uh, to get a really nice result. I would find that it would just be, uh, a very messy surgery. And so this week on Wednesday, we had a lovely patient who had a rhinophimatous nose. I used the CO2 laser. And this is a kind of a crazy procedure because you're essentially burning the whole nose. You're re-sculpting, reshaping, and burning the whole nose. And when the patient leaves, their nose is char. It's kind of yellowy, it's kind of black where you've cauterized deeper, and it looks like char. But because those sebaceous glands go really deep and they're lined with epithelium, the nose will heal from those glands, it will heal from the surrounding skin, and you'll get a new uh, skin growing over top of the nose that is not as diseased as the skin before the procedure. These patients always, always, always have lighter skin, so there's always a hypopigmentation associated with the uh, CO2 laser recontouring of the nose, but it is a normal looking nose, normal shaped nose.
After you do something like that with CO2 laser, you can use the VBM or the pulse dye laser to maintain the result if there's any sort of uh, ongoing growth or hyperplasia at the glands. You can really settle it down and maintain it with the laser. So that's rosacea, chronic disease, no cure, multiple different theories onto causes, multiple different treatments. Here at Guelph Facial Plastics, I prefer to use uh, the V-beam laser to control redness, the CO2 laser to treat rhinophyma, rhinophyma which is the, the kind of big knobbly nose that rosacea can create. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Happy Facial Plastics Friday.